Hi, everyone, and welcome to the BFCM Breakdown, a PostScript webinar. I'm Laura Serino, Senior Content Marketing Manager here at PostScript, and I am delighted to be your host today. Um, it's game time, everybody. Black Friday, Cyber Monday is just about two months away, which is why I'm so excited to be joined by an incredible lineup of merchants that are going to dive into their SMS strategies for Black Friday and beyond. So today we have Yummy O, the founder and CEO of Yummy Extensions, Drew Cowan, who is the Associate Director of Life, Cy of Life Cycle Marketing at Dr. Squatch, and Mina Hadjian, the Director of Digital Marketing at Organic Olivia. There's a very specific reason why we asked these three merchants to come talk to all of you about Cyber Week strategies. Last Black Friday, these brands ran the top revenue generating campaigns on Black Friday across the board, across all of our merchants on PostScript. So if there is anyone that can offer impactful advice on how to use SMS to your advantage during Cyber Week, it's these three marketers. So today our goal is to showcase the power of SMS when you use it strategically leading up to and during the biggest shopping event of the year. And we wanted to hear straight from the merchants who have experienced crushing Black Friday about what they plan on doing this year. And, you know, if this is the first year you've thought about SMS marketing by being a main part of your holiday promotions, or perhaps you're just going to ramp things up a little bit more this year, uh, you've come to the right place. So let me introduce you to our merchants. We are missing one. We're going to get her on. We're trying desperately in the background. Um, but we do have with us today, Drew Cowan, who is the Associate Director of Lifecycle Marketing at Dr. Squatch, a men's natural personal care product company. Dr. Squatch was a disruptor when they entered the personal care market, and they have managed to make soap kind of more of a movement than just a brand. Mina Hadjian is the Director of Digital Marketing for Organic Olivia. Organic Olivia takes a modern approach to traditional herbal medicine. They also have an incredible podcast and blog that focuses on wellness and herbal remedies. So um, I'm so happy to see your faces here. We also have Yummy O, um, who is the founder and CEO of Yummy Extensions. Um, and Yummy Extensions makes the best authentic natural human hair extensions on the market. They operate through their website, but they also have two brick and mortar stores, one in Dallas, one in Brooklyn. We're having trouble getting yummy into the back into the back end here but we're gonna get her so i will work on that as we continue forward um i'm so happy to see your faces here today and i really appreciate you both taking the time out of you know a, a increasingly hectic schedule to share your knowledge with the greater post group community so thank you um i think you know one of the biggest things that comes to mind about each of your brands is the community you've built around it you're really well known within the industry of having a very loyal customer base. So to kick things off, I mean, I'd love if each of you could share how you use SMS to really nurture those relationships and cultivate that community. So let's start with um, you, Mina. Sure. Thank you for having us here, Laura and PostScript team. Um, SMS has really been game changing for us, as you probably have heard from so many other merchants, but at Organic Olivia community, as you mentioned, always came first for us. And SMS really gave us another platform and opened those gates to really connect with them on an even more personal level and deepen those relationships even further. So SMS can be a little bit intimidating. There's that kind of like misconception that it might be a little intrusive, but customers are giving you their phone number. They're putting their phone number down because they want to hear from you. And that's also been proven wrong because I've seen the success that's come from this channel. So, um, you know, our incredible founder, Olivia Amitrano, has been so connected with her audience from day one, from social to YouTube to, um, you know, just being in the, you know, social spotlight. And so her relationships with her community have now kind of moved to different channels and SMS can kind of be an opportunity for her to message some content to them that isn't always received the same on social. So we will send updates. Um, sometimes they're brand related updates through SMS and sometimes they're going to be um, personal updates. So it's really just um, another chat, like an herb 
herb chat, you know, we like to call it like, you know, our community, the herb fam. And so when we get in there, we'll like ask any questions that can be, you know, what should we name her new puppy to, you know, what should we, what should be our next formula we're launching? So we really get that community aspect and um, it's a really, really fun channel to work with because we get like an overwhelming amount of responses of um, with people like connecting with us and just saying hi. I remember the puppy uh, <laughs> very well. I think I voted for Banks. Was Banks the winning name? Yeah, it was the winning All name. Right. So, yeah, that's her puppy's name. Um, <laughs> Yummy, I'm so glad you made it. I was so worried for a second there. I was. Um, I'm so glad I'm here. <laughs> we had some technical difficulties. <laughs> no worries at all. That's what live webinars are for. So Yummy, I wanted to ask the same question to you. Obviously, you have a very uh, engaged community. And how do you use SMS to kind of speak to your your base? Sure, I'd like to first say thank you so much to Postscript for inviting me to share our brand with your merchants. Um, I will first of all say that definitely SMS had, was a bit, big game changer for us whenever we launched in June of 2020. Um, it was the first time we were able to be able to communicate with our customers, our yummy girls like we like to refer to them as, in an immediate and informal way. Um, where we were really able to exchange dialogue. It was more like a two-way dialogue communication with our yummy girls. And we essentially shared inspirational messages, exclusive promotions. And if, whenever we had special events, our, you know, our yummy insiders will get first dibs and first access to them. Um, again, SMS, whenever it did launch, we have loved it. It has been incredibly successful for our business, for our brand, for our customers. And also, you know, the response feature as well is something that we use a lot at Yummy because our customers are able to provide us immediate responses. Hey, I really love that message, Yummy. Thank you for that quote that you shared that made my day. And it just really helps us to further um, assess our strategies and to just continue to improve in that communication and improve in that, um, I would say, make fostering that relationship between yummy between our brand and our customers so sms has been amazing we love it we can't do without it right now so thank you postscript for that you're welcome yummy I <laughs> you're doing a lot of the legwork there but thank you um drew same exact question to you how are you guys using sms to speak to squatch nation yeah hi everyone um I think like pretty similar to what Nina and Yami said, we have a highly, highly engaged customer base. Um, we have some customers that have gotten Squatch logo tattoos just to like give you guys some context there. So like very highly engaged. Um, we call our SMS group the Squatch SMS Squad. So we really use it to have a more conversational tone with our audience. Our audience loves humor, like our customers love it. That's just who they are. So we really try to use this channel to communicate with them in a conversational kind of humorous tone. Um, and our channel is really used for access to exclusive promotions, first dibs on launches. We have tons of limited edition soaps and hair care products that we launch and new product lines coming up soon. So that's really what we use our channels for, our SMS channel for because um, our customer loves it. And then, you know, we get to put a little spin on it by putting some Squatch branded copy um, involved in it as well. But I think similar to what Mina and Yummy said, like we love SMS and Squatch. We would send every day if we could, and you might see us do that in November and December. Um, <laughs> but no, we, we love it. Um, and it's been like highly, highly successful for our company. Awesome. Well, uh, let's dive right in to what's top of mind for everyone on this webinar right now, which is Black Friday and Cyber Monday. You know, last year, as I mentioned, you you really sent some of the top revenue generating campaigns on Black Friday across, you know, across the board. So, uh, Drew, I want to start with you. Can you talk a little bit about how you approached using SMS last year and maybe just share some results on what happened last Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Yeah, so... Last year was the first year at Squash that we really had a pretty large SMS list. And so we were really trying to figure out 
how best to use that list. And I think with our calendar, especially in November and December, we have product launches, promotions that change. So there's, I mean, at least once a week, if not more, there's something new to talk about. So we approached it as this is an exciting time of the year. If we can be, you know, short, sweet, to the point, conversational, funny, and we have something to say, let's send a text. Um, and we did. And we generated more revenue on SMS than email last year, which is huge, um, especially when you think of our list sizes. I think our email list size last year was double SMS list size, if not more than that. Um, and we still generated more revenue on the SMS channel. So I think that just shows the power of SMS. It's why all of us <laughs> speaking on this panel love it so much. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a super exciting time. That was the first time that we saw that happen. And then I think since then, it's been pretty interesting because we've continuously seen SMS drive more revenue actually than some of our other channels. Um, I mean, we still, we still love email. I live and breathe email all day, every day. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really exciting to see the power of SMS, especially in November and December. I got like goosebumps when you said that, by the way. <laughs> Um, Mina, same question for you. I think, I think last year was maybe the first cyber weekend that you, you were using SMS for Organic Olivia. Can you talk a little bit about how you approached things last year and how SMS performed for the brand? Yeah, it was our first year, our first Black Friday using SMS. So the months leading up to Black Friday, we spent a lot of time uh, list building and we really tapped into our social community to do that. And our existing email subscribers, which is, you know, like for every sale in the past, we've really leaned into that. That was really our main marketing channel. We previously didn't run ads either. So our email list is, is really highly engaged. And so what we were starting to do is kind of transfer some of those subscribers to SMS so we can start to utilize that for Black Friday. And some of the perks that we were highlighting were, um, early access to Black Friday, and that's something we hadn't done before. So SMS, again, allowed us to do something fun like that and kind of test the waters. And we typically just start our sale on Friday. Um, we really like to just, um, I'll get into more of you know this later, but we really like to honor Thanksgiving with time with family, but um, we wanted to test early access. And so we were messaging that leading up to Black Friday to get some of our subscribers over. Um, and, you know, I think now maybe like one third of our email subscribers trans like our oak came over to SMS. And I'm sure in the beginning it was less. Um, that's kind of like where I'm, I'm sitting at now. And even at that time, when we just started SMS, I believe almost 40% of our black Friday sales came from early access day. So, um, that was pretty amazing to see. So it just kind of goes to show that people who really do share their phone numbers are, you know, there and they're not just there for the chats, but they're there for, you know, they're super loyal, they're highly engaged. And um, I'll get into more strategies later, but, you know, we only really message when we have something to really say, kind of like what Drew was saying. Like, if we have something to add, it's never just like a, hey, we have a sale. And even through our reminders, we're always going to be, be providing more value. And we'll get into that later on, too. But uh, just being really, really clear with every message and intentional with every message that we send throughout the weekend specifically. That's great. And both of you so far have kind of touched on list growth. And I think that there's still, you know, it being September, there's still a lot of acquisition strategies that merchants can implement leading into Cyber Week. And Yummy has a, a really good one about uh, what she does with list growth um, before Black Friday rolls around. So Yummy, I'd love if you could kind of share um, what you do there and then also how Black Friday and Cyber Monday went last year for Yummy Extensions. Absolutely. So you're right. So in the month of September and October, we basically double up on our list growth. And one of the ways that we do that is um, in October, we have our, which is a major fall sale that we have at Yummy Extensions. And during that sale, what we do is that we shut down our entire website for 24 hours. And we put a pretty banner on the website 
um, that looks that stands out from the rest of the messaging we've done in the past and basically tell them, hey guys, our Yomi girls are currently experiencing an exclusive offer. In order to participate in this offer, text whatever that code is, a special code for our Black Friday VIP customers. Text this number, this message or this keyword to this number in order to participate in the sale. So naturally, everybody wanted to join that list. Like the web, the entire website is shut down just for the insiders. They must be incredibly important. And we did that, we've done that for the last two years and it's been incredibly successful. Um, last year we grew our list within, actually it was less than 24 hours and 12 hours, grew our list by 500, about 500 to 800 um, subscribers in one day. Um, so that's one of the ways that we've, you know, we've grown our list towards the holiday season. And additionally, we train our um, retail store team members and our customer experience team members to always request um, list entry. Like, so in any conversation or all kind of customer interactions, you know, share the benefits of being a yummy insider, being a yummy text insider, and always try to obtain their phone numbers and let them know the value of that that we are going to share in, in those messages. So, you know, like I said earlier, it's almost like that girl chat group. People want to know. They Everybody wants to know. They want to know what, what you're not sharing elsewhere, right? So that's essentially how we, we grew our list. We, we continue to grow our list. It's a consistent project. But towards the month of September and October, we double, double up on that. Now, coming on to Black Friday itself, um, like Mina said, exclusive access is everything. Again, we sell, we sell a vanity product. We sell luxury. So people want to be able to know how can I get this quicker than everybody else? How can I get this fast? And so we do utilize an early access, which is an early access Black Friday VIP is what we like to call them. And all of these individuals who have added themselves to this list do get access to the sale before everybody else. And we communicate that, I'm going to get to that later, but we communicate that clearly. So on Thanksgiving Day, our Yummy Insiders, Yummy Text Insiders received a special text at a special time. No one knew what time that was. They received a special text, special time, and they were able to make their purchase before everybody else did. And we found tremendous success with that, uh, even with SMS. I would say for those two days, which is what, Thanksgiving Day and Black Friday itself, 46% of our revenue, our total revenue that weekend came from SMS itself. So once again, again, I'm going to say it again, it was really successful. And one thing to think about as well is it's a holiday season. Everybody is with the families. They're looking to their phone for messages. Mm -hmm. So I believe that SMS is successful in those seasons because people are on their phones. They're not so much in their computers or so on there. They're expecting messages from family members. So when they see that message coming from Yummy Extensions, they're like, right, I see it immediately. I'm able to make my purchase and convert and go back and spend time with my family. So yeah, that's how we did last year. And it just continues to be successful year after year. I love that term girl group chat too. Cause that's yeah. what, uh, that could be the name of our band. If the four of us had a band, I feel like <laughs> the girl group chat. Okay, so as brands, when it comes to promotions and big sale weekends, um, there's a couple of different approaches that brands take. Some of them are very transparent in terms of what to expect, what's in the pipeline, and a lot of other brands like to keep it a surprise, and their 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 base really likes it to be a surprise. So I'm curious on how you approach that, and and what you share on SMS or what you don't share, how you tease that out. Um, Mina, let's start with you. Yeah, so as you know, we talked about before, being super connected with the community has really been advantageous for us because we really lean into what we really are picking up from the community and what they're looking for. But what we typically do is try to alleviate some of that Black Friday anxiety just because I feel like once November rolls around, everyone's like, looking for all the sales already. There's cyber month, there's cyber week, there's cyber weekend. There's just so much going on. So 
something that's really important for us is to sort of alleviate a little bit of that anxiety and how we do that is we stick to a few things, one being transparency. And so we're really transparent about our Black Friday, Cyber Monday details and like what we're offering when we're going live. Sometimes we maintain an element of surprise in terms of what time that's going live because we have our SMS subscribers who do have that a bit more um, VIP exclusivity, but we really try to prep our customers so they can start building their carts and planning their buys. Uh, and then also just um, they, they're they also aware that they don't have to um, be taken away from their family or friends during Thanksgiving while they're having dinner or on the day of. Um, the second thing that we do is we're really honest about what our sale is. So we market and message it as our biggest sale of the year. And it truly is. We don't um, extend the sale and deepen the discount. Sometimes we do extend it in, in based on demand and it'll always be the same op, um, offer, but we don't offer a deeper discount as the weekend goes on. Um, personally for, for us, uh, we just kind of extend what was offered and sometimes it'll go till Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on customers coming around and saying, oh, you know, I missed it. And, you know, something that's really great to see is the responses in real time um, on SMS is really great to see because you kind of get a pulse of, you know, what's going on. You know, that's kind of one of the first and fastest places to see if a link isn't working, if a code isn't working. Of course, people e email customer support, but I found that we now are starting to have like a customer service agent monitor that during big weekends like that. So, um, that's also something that has been helpful for us. Uh, and then, like I said, number three, like our rule is just like honoring family time. So um, people don't have to worry about things selling out of stock and um, just really like it's a Friday to Sunday, Monday, maybe Tuesday sale and everything's like super transparent from the get go. That's great. And it's true that 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 buying anxiety really does exist. So it makes sense yeah. that that's an approach you take for your brand. And Drew, what's um, Dr. Squatch's approach to t teasing out or not teasing out upcoming sales? Yeah, so we, we actually like to use our email channel to tease out sales and collect opt-in at the same time. So we'll say like, hey, we have you know a new product launching. Because um, this year, for example, our holidays start in the very beginning of November with um, an exciting launch that's going to be coming up. So stay tuned and you can get access um, on email when you sign up for SMS. So that's like kind of how we like tease out the promotions by using both channels. And then we don't tend to tease out promotions November and December on SMS itself. Um, we didn't last year. This year, there is a little bit of discussion actually around giving someone a heads up, you know, a couple of days before something launches more for the product launch side, uh, not so much on the sales side, actually. Um, so that's just, that's our approach um, on, you know, using our email list to tease out a sale to collect opt-in. We've found that that's extremely successful for converting our email subscribers to SMS subscribers. So we definitely like um, that approach. These are, I mean, these are like very actionable things people can be doing right now in terms of like just takeaway from you guys have met, that you guys have mentioned, reminding that email list that SMS gets exclusive perks, gating some kind of offer, whether it's your entire site or just like a new product drop or a sale, even if it's for a limited amount of time, that could be really good um, strategies for acquisition right now. Um, so we've we've talked to a lot of merchants about how we're coming out of this pandemic boost. Um, sales are maybe slowing a bit year over year, maybe not for everyone, but certainly for, for some. And with all that in mind, have you taken a different approach um, coming off of last year and how you're going to run promotions this year? Is there anything you're doing differently? Are you doing it exactly the same? I'm really curious on your take here. Um, Mina, let's start with you. Yeah, so we might do things a little bit differently this year. We won't start, start necessarily early, but SMS will continue to have the similar perks of first to be notified. And something that I haven't mentioned is that um, we do throughout the weekend and when we send reminders, we never just send like a little reminder. 
um, that's just like, oh, the sale is still on. We always provide value with every message that we send. So something that SMS also made easier in, um, for us is to share live inventory updates as the weekend goes on. So, you know, we can talk about products going selling low. We talk about unexpected bestsellers or we, we talk about product pairings, just kind of guiding the buyer throughout the weekend and not just like, hey, the sale is still going on and just making sure that we're always providing um, something of importance. And so we find that our customers really do appreciate that because they're either like, oh, we're content with what we bought on the first two days, or actually that makes me think maybe I do want this formula and I'm going to come back and rebuy while the product is on sale. So um, another tactic that we're doing is that we, last year we did a launch, um, we launched our entire T-line, which is a brand new um, line and collection for us, which was really successful. But this year, we're actually going to be launching a new formula on Black Friday that we're really excited about. And I think combining the dopamine of like Black Friday and the excitement around a new product and like those those in combination really excite our customers. And uh, we're excited to even offer this brand new formula um, during the sale. And we actually have historically launched new products or formulas in Black Friday month or in November. And customers get really excited and because they're able to purchase it for, you know, 20% off or whatever that number is, and uh, they get to try it and see if they like it. So we're doing that this year and um, the perks will remain the same. So just like being able to share those like quick and real time brand updates about inventory and reminding them that the sale is still um, live is really been uh, successful for us as the weekend goes on. And are you doing those? I'm just curious, are you doing those inventory updates to people that have purchased or are you letting your entire audience know that certain bestsellers or certain new products are running low? Yeah, we're like intuitively segmenting during that time, too. So um, I, I think something about segmentation is that you can pre-create them all you want. But then there's something that happens during the weekend where you're like, I don't know. I, I just feel like sending this message to everyone is not the play here. I think we should kind of exclude someone who's maybe purchased in the past couple of days. Or it's like, no, this is actually a really juicy update. And I think that everyone would appreciate it. So if they like receive this message, so maybe it'll go to all subscribers. So um, it's really an in the moment type of segmentation that happens during Black Friday weekend because I've planned so many in the past and every time it comes down to it I always just change up the like resend strategy um in in the middle of Black Friday so uh, but yeah that's a great question Laura great and um Drew what is Dr. Squatch's approach this year what can we expect from you guys yeah so I say we doubled down last year and we're, I guess, tripling down, if you want to call it that this year. Um, so a few things that we're thinking of, um, generally certain strategies are the same where we'll send, you know, messages anytime that there is a new product release, because that's going to happen a few times over the course of November and December, anytime that a promotion changes, anytime we launch new combination of bundles, for example, like which we did last year. I think what we're um, considering doing this year, and this wasn't even necessarily, I think our original plan, but I'm sure kind of like you mentioned, sales are kind of just crazy right now in the D2C world. Like it's, you just kind of don't know where, where things are at and sales have slowed to some extent for everyone um, across D2C. And so we're kind of thinking about shifting strategy right now and we're thinking about, you know, really, really adding value to these SMS sends. So giving, you know, an additional maybe discount, for example, on something that's already discounted on the site only via SMS, um, maybe doing like a countdown to Christmas. So, you know, launching kind of flash sales or flash product sales, um, just to keep the excitement going, to keep people interested. We have so many products, so many bundles, so many exciting things going on in those months. So it's really how can we add that additional value? So I think we're being flexible. Um, I think that, you know, to Nina's point, like some of this is going to be pre-planned and some of this is going to be in the moment. Like how can we be flexible, which is I think super important for everyone listening in on this call. And I think that's one of the great things about SMS is you can make those kind of last minute, if you will, decisions. Whereas on some of the other channels, 
especially if it requires creative, like sometimes it's a bit harder to be flexible. So I think we're really taking that approach. Um, and if we plan on sending, you know, maybe a higher volume this year, which is the plan right now, really monitoring our unsub rate, really monitoring those responses um, that come in just to make sure that people are still engaged, that they're still excited about what we're doing, which is what our expectation is. Um, but definitely just keeping our eye on some of those pieces as well. Great. And Yummy, same question for you um, on how Yummy Extensions is going to approach things differently or not this year. Thanks for that. Um, we may make some minor adjustments. We're still in the you know early change of planning phase of it. Um, but quite frankly, the, the, the structure is going to remain the same. Um, just like, you know, Mina stated, you know, as it relates to the date of the sale itself, we may need to make some minor tweaks as we go. Um, we do plan to use segmentation heavily this year. Um, we are working on, you know, some creatives that are specific to certain products um, that are going to go out to certain customers, you know, who have previously ordered those products before. Let's just say you ordered wavy hair prior in the summer. We're probably going to be sending you an e a text message that is related to wavy hair and why you need it for the holiday season. And this is the offer for the wavy texture. You see, so that way specific to the specific individuals. That's one thing we didn't do last year. So we do plan to do that this year. Um, also in general, like for anyone who's listening, again, volume is important of number of text messages that you send, because we have to understand that people are, that is your, that's the last sale of the year, essentially last set of sales for the year. So this is basically the time that you have to engage your customers. They are in the market of, for buying, like they're here to buy, they're here to spend money and during the season. So making sure that you double up on that communication and also the creatives don't necessarily have to, which we plan to do, don't necessarily all have to be the same ads, shop now, Black Friday. Like they could be like a, a really cute gif, you know, something with as it relates to like Thanksgiving dinner. Like it needs, it can be something a lot more engaging because again, they're going to be receiving a lot more, a lot of text messages during that season. So, you know, find creatives that allow your messaging to stand out among the rest. Um, and also, and we're going to get to that also like the copy of your messaging too is important. I mean, it is, and it is important that you during this season, what we plan to do anyway is to kind of switch it up a little bit, keep it nice, sweet and concise and, you know, and have making sure that the link that they need to click is literally on the second line of the messaging and not a whole full paragraph of messages. So that's something that we're going to work on this. I would just, we're, sell, we're selling, we're all we're doing right now is selling at this point, um, the next, um, those two days. So that is the plan for Yummy. And again, like I said, we are still kind of working through the strategy, but for the most part, we're going to keep it the same. And Yummy, has your gated um, sale this year already happened? Did that just happen or is it coming up? We had a mini one in September, but we have the major one in October. Can't right. tell us the date though. Everyone's got to get on that list, I guess. Yeah, they have to get on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we do have questions that have filtered in, but before we get into the Q and A portion of things, um, uh, one last question for each of you would be. Are there any kind of specific PostScript features or anything that's just SMS specific that you're planning on using to make BFCM a little easier for you this year or perhaps more impactful in some way that maybe you haven't used before, maybe that maybe that you use regularly that you just feel like is a big win. So, um, Mina, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to like to weigh in here. Yeah, I feel like I already sort of touched on this, so I'll keep it light. But for now, uh, I've really been leaning into the segmentation. So I, I do see the segmentation becoming more and more advanced. So there's a lot more ways um, to make sure you're messaging to the right people and even just kind of like knowing when to exclude certain buyers or people who viewed a certain product or purchased a certain product or just when to include everyone. So segmentation's just been something that I really lean into for Black Friday. And, you know, because you need to be flexible to Drew's point, you know, we are kind of changing strategies in the moment. So 
uh, that's kind of the best way to tool that I found that I used during Black Friday and um, the responses. Like, I think that's something that I did, you know, last year with the team, but continue to monitor the responses because you get so much um, real time kind of errors or even just support. So you kind of get those like really cool, you know, just here to say thank you message or just like, hey, something's not working. So it's good to notify the customer support team. Great. I feel like we're going to have a theme here. It's my my feeling. Uh, Yummy, what about you? If I touch on it br briefly, um, I believe I touched on it briefly. It's definitely segmentation. <laughs> Yeah. Segmentation is going to be something that we're going to do differently this year. Just making sure, again, once again, making sure that we are touching, you know, sending messages that people want to receive that are, you know, adding value while still, you know, promoting the offer um, during Black Friday. So that is the plan. Great. Drew, any thoughts on uh, Postscript features or SMS specific features in general you'll be leaning in on heavily? I think one thing um, that we do is we actually change our pop-ups on site to mm. kind of highlight different sales and tie specific keywords to each pop-up so that like as new, you know, acquisition traffic lands on the site, we're capturing them and also hitting them with a message that is like, that makes sense for the holidays versus our evergreen offer. Um, and kind of using the, the flow automation in PostScript and, you know, specific keywords and, we have a bunch of different countries now. So that adds another layer where, you know, we're using the segmentation tool to split traffic based off geo-targeting using, you know, keywords that way. So I think that's kind of one additional um, piece on top of what Nina and Yami kind of already mentioned um, that we pay pretty close attention to um, leading up to the holidays and then also during the holidays. And I guess like a segmentation question that comes to my mind a little bit when we're talking about these big sale weekends is how to know uh, is there an is there an approach anyone can weigh in on this is there an approach that you take do you when you decide when to do like a full list send and then maybe your follow-ups are more segmented do you have an approach going into these weekends where you really or the the holiday season in general when you really have a lot of new products, new big sales that you really want to make sure um, people see? I, I can kind of touch on that a little bit. I think November and December, for us at least, I think it obviously depends on your list size and your customer base, but it's kind of the one time of the year that we don't have to segment as granularly as we maybe do other times of the year because there's just so much going on um, and all brands are doing it. And so I think there's a little bit less risk. I think we definitely, for any time we're launching a product or a promotion changes, like I mentioned, based off our marketing calendar, because for us, it's all of November and December. There's something going on and it changes. Um, so we want people, even if they already purchased, to be aware that, for example, we launched a new product category. Yeah. Like if you bought yesterday, that's fine. That's awesome. Maybe we'll get you to buy again because we just launched a new product. Um, I think... As far as like the promotions go, if it's the same sale over the course of a couple of days, I don't think that you need to send to someone who's already purchased. But if there's something new to say, or like Nina mentioned, like some additional value add, um, whether it be like inventory update or something else, I think mm -hmm. you can test at least going broader than you normally would. And you can always scale back if you need to. Great. Okay, we're going to move into Q&A in a minute. I just want to do a little housekeeping first. Um, after this webinar is wrapped, we will be sending all attendees a recap. You can watch it again and again and again and soak up all the knowledge. Um, and we're also going to be sending along our BFCM planner, which offers weekly tasks that you can start you know, doing right away and well, even into the new year to make sure you're optimizing your SMS strategy. So this planner will keep you on track for all of those crucial SMS to do's as we get closer to cyber week. And we also have another live event on October 25th. And this is for, um, this is going to be a deeper dive into postscript features and we'll present ways not only to like prep for black Friday, but also cover how to 
collect subscribers during your peak traffic times, ideas on how to generate additional revenue throughout December, and of course, how to target those new customers and subscribers again in the new year using Postscript. So on for the Q&A. Let's see, first question. Um, I like this one. Uh, Drew, I'm gonna send this one to you because Dr. Squatch is so good at this. Any suggestions for writing good SMS copy for our Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Yeah, I think um, Yummy kind of mentioned this, but I think it's super important to understand your brand voice. The Dr. Squatch brand voice is going to be completely different, I can imagine, than the brand voice of the, you know, the brands of the other two panelists on this call. Um, so I think that understanding your brand voice and your customer is like the most important thing. Um, I think that being short and sweet and to the point, especially during these high volume time periods is extremely important. Um, people aren't going to want to sit there and read, you know, a whole paragraph. People want to know like, okay, why did you text me? Do I, am I interested in this? Yes or no. Um, I think one thing that we've been kind of testing and playing around with, and I think you had asked this question, um, maybe to the other two previously, but do we kind of say what the sale is or do we leave it to surprise and have them kind of land on site? Um, we're testing it right now. We've seen success both ways, which is like great, but also not super helpful as far as, you know, which one do we want to go with? So I think if people want to plan on testing, you know, promotion language, copy, like now's the time to do it so that you have those learnings going into those November and December timeframes. But yeah, just short, sweet, to the point, clear CTA and, you know, branded, I think are the top tips I would give. Anyone else have any copy tips to offer our, our community here? No? Great. Emojis. Emojis. <laughs> Those always help. <laughs> um, all right. Let me pull up another one here. Um, how do you decide what to message your customers during Black Friday Cyber Monday? Do you rely on just promotions or is it a mix? That is a good question. I'll take that. Just promotions. <laughs> Okay. Um, during the season, the customers are, that's what they're expecting to see. So we send them exactly what they need. Like this is not the time I, I would say, at least for yummy extensions, this time frame is not the time to speak, like talk housekeeping stuff or anything that's outside of the parameters of the promotion. So during this time, we communicate the promotion. We communicate in um, inventory updates. For example, a person a customer ordered an item that um, they ordered an item during on Thursday when the sale started, but then on Friday, we restocked on a complimentary item. Then at that point, we would use segmentation to notify them and say, hey, Jane, um, this complimentary item is now available that will go well with the item you purchased yesterday. Things like that, but it's still speaking specifically on the sale, on the promotion. It's ending soon. This is the last chance. This is the best sale of the year. Um, you know, a sense of urgency. So that way they're able to make that purchasing decision. So we focus on the sale only. Like, quite frankly, if you're new or just listen to this call, while yes, we want to add value, that's exactly what we're here for. However, the customers, your customers during the season are looking for a bag in, they're looking for savings. And that is the communication that we I would highly advise that you focus on. Because what's going to happen is it might get ignored and you're not going to get the result that you need. So, I mean, I think uh, one of the panelists, I forget her name now, my brain just froze, but she mentioned, not Mina, the, <laughs> she, Drew, Drew mentioned that this is the time to hit hard, right? This is the last, the last two months of the year, right? So, and your customers, this is the time they're shopping, they're shopping, at least for what we offer with hair extensions. You know, they're essentially looking for you know, the, their looks for the holiday season. So mm -hmm. this is a time to make that purchase. They want to buy, they want to purchase now. And that's all they want to hear about is that promotion. And I will highly recommend that you focus your messaging on that during that time. I think one thing to just add super quickly, I think it also depends on like, so Squatch is very similar, but I think it depends on your brand. So, mm -hmm. you know, there might be some, you know, people listening in and some brands who, 
like maybe you don't even do promotions. Like I think Patagonia, for example, is one example of a company who like very rarely, if at all, does any type of promotion, if I'm remembering. So I think that depending on your brand and your marketing calendar, I still think that you know, if you are a brand that falls into maybe one of the other categories, you can still send messages because it's all about understanding your customer base. So like add value in a different way if you're not running promotions or if you're if you don't have as heavy of a calendar, for example, throughout all of November and December, you can still create touch points before just Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend. Um, so I just wanted to kind of add that mm-hmm. in to make sure, sure we're covering, you know, full customer base <laughs> and people who might be listening in. That's a great point. If you cannot run a deep discount, it doesn't mean you need to go dark during yeah, Friday, exactly. Monday to your customers. Okay. Um, let's see. This is good. We haven't really touched on automations much at all. Um, besides the obvious ones, like Abandoned Cart and Welcome Series, any automations that have performed really well for you? Yeah, I can jump in. So we really take the personalization route and i think many brands do because sms is again that opportunity to get super personal so what we like to do is this is not really black friday related but just automation related is in for example one of our welcome flows we start to depending on your categories and your product offering we kind of start to divide them to say what is it that you're looking for and we provide keywords such as, are you stressed? Um, are you looking for detox? Are you looking for gut health? Are you looking for mental health? So there's all these different categories and we try to bucket them so that we can actually send them more content because we have so much herbal education as well on the site through the blog and through the podcast that once we get people into these buckets, we can then really continue to send them more and more messages mm-hmm. on that particular topic. So that has been one that's been really successful depending on what their problem area or their pain points are and then we also have a lot of fun with it well we you know something that's really on brand for us is astrology so we really like to get into it so we run a automation that's specifically a zodiac automation we're like let us know what your sign is and what we spit back is really just um these like really fun um, cheeky herbal messages of saying, hey, this is your herb. We like match you with an herb. And, you know, in the future when their season rolls around, we do kind of product recommendations, ritual rec- recommendations, and really get them engaged. And I think that's like where the value really comes in because that's something you wouldn't get anywhere else um, from the brand. You're getting something that's personalized, something that you've opted in for. You're like, I really care about this kind of content. And we really want to speak to them. I know it's impossible to do one to one, but this is as close as we're going to get um, when we're speaking to a bigger community. So that's been a really successful one. And, and not just in terms of sales, again, like to Drew's point, like we're um, we don't run a lot of promotions. Black Friday is our only time of the year. And um, with with um, our SMS strategy, we just like to share a lot of knowledge and, you know, recipes, updates, um, messages from Olivia. She touches everything that goes out. So, um, you know, definitely shedding some light into what's going on into her personal life. And um, these automations like give you continuous updates of what's happening. So we're able to like put a lot of um, heart and soul into these automations and uh, we get a lot of engagement. So we see a lot of clicks or we get a lot of, um, you know, visits to the site looking at different analytics platforms. Mm, Great. Oh my gosh. There's so many questions coming in. Uh, um, So this one here, someone, this one's just for you, Yummy. Someone is asking, do you think that shutting down approach would work for a company with a smaller audience? Uh, I think there's just a little bit, well, really love that approach, shut it down for one full day. I guess people are, are, I had a feeling you would uh, inspire some people here with this one. So any ideas on uh, maybe what a smaller brand with smaller traffic might try? Okay. Um, I think it would work, but I would just think, I would just know that, say that you just need to be a lot more intentional about your communication and, and inform them ahead of time. Mm. So try a month, like a month ahead of time, like start start the rollout about a month ahead of time where you just continue to communicate and say, on this day, we have something special for you. 
and and you know you've got to join this list in order for you to participate and this is what's going to happen and i think also and what that does it basically alerts them like either they go join the list now or they are ready to join the list when the site comes up that could increase the increase the, the visitors but i also know that this also helps alongside your ads as well right so you've got your you know we have google ads the facebook ads and all that that you know basically attracts our customers customers or guests to visit the website so again i don't see why not i mean at the end of the day it's one day i mean if you don't necessarily have to keep it up keep it down the entire time Right. You can you can be for 12 hours. You can start from 8 to 8 or something like that, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. But I think communicating it earlier, way ahead of time and informing them will be helpful. So that way they know. And even and then also one thing you want to do is, you know, on your social, stay active on your social media, right? So when people continue to ask, you know, why is the website down? Then give them the link, mm -hmm. you know? So you've got to have someone monitoring that consistently to be able to go on the website. But I think it works. I mean, again, 12 hours doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know, you may not get the same volume that we got of, of visit of visitors, but then what it does is that it tells them, they then they start to tell their friends. Cause what we found was after we did that, whenever people will comment, oh, I didn't hear in the, on Instagram, I didn't hear about that event. And then another customer will respond, oh, you must be on that list. That's why you didn't hear, I heard about it. So join the list. So, so news travels. Right. And then like for them to do something as drastic as that, that means it's incredibly important to be a part of it. So, again, it's just like, you know, sorority, like people want to be a part of something, you know, when they when it's vague and there's ambigu ambiguity with it. So I think it would help. I believe it would help. Um, give it a try. It doesn't hurt. Try it on a Monday. <laughs> try it on Monday. Try it this Monday. <laughs> try um, this is another really good one. So. Do you feel some resistance or spike in unsub rates for SMS during non-holiday or non-sales days? So just like kind of an unsub question. Does anyone want to take this one? I can, we, we monitor unsub rates pretty quickly. I just want to make, or pretty um, constantly, just want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. So we would see, we would tend to see a higher unsub rate actually the days that you send higher volume, right? Which mm -hmm. makes sense. Like the high, the more you send, the more people unsubscribe. I think, do we see a higher unsub rate during non-holiday or non-sales days? Not necessarily. Not if you're still sending someone a message that they want to receive. So, um, you know, like Mina was saying, if it's something that is, you know, a recipe or people who have opted into certain content. I think that on days that are non-holiday, non-sales, you're probably doing more segmentation. So we would actually see a lower unsubscribe rate. And then again, yeah, days that you're sending higher volume, you're going to see a higher unsubscribe rate, even if it's during Black Friday. Like if you send to your full list of, you know, million SMS opt-ins, you're going to see a higher unsubscribe rate, even if people are taking advantage of the offer and you're making up with it in revenue. Great. There are so many questions here. I am having trouble getting through. Uh, there's a lot actually on frequency. I'm going to pull this one up. Um, there, there's a lot of questions specifically around the frequency at which you maybe communicate over SMS during that BFCM window, but then also outside of it. Like how maybe that that those numbers spike or don't spike. Does anyone have any thoughts on just messaging frequency on what works for your brand? Yeah. I mean, we kind of test all over the board. You know, we have we have a good cadence, but we also sometimes will just send so much more than we typically do. And some months we might be just more quiet. And it's interesting because you can really see the difference when you're sending a lot. And what I notice is that when we do product launches, for example, we'll send so many teaser texts. And it's just like every text is just something new about um, the formula new uh, about the star herb. And so every single text is just going like, we'll send one a week or a couple a week about one particular herb or formula. And that feels like a lot when you're talking about one thing, but it, when we test it and we push it and we're just like, I feel like this is good information to put out there. We get good responses. So um, I think for things that you're trying to build hype around, volume is you shouldn't be afraid of the volume and that's something that is still being tested i think you should go for it and let your metrics kind of tell you what's going on and then 
if you feel that you're getting responses and a lot of people are either messaging you saying they want to opt out or they're unsubscribing at a higher rate, then pull back. But I think uh, something that we all are getting comfortable with is the volume of text messages we're sending. And we do a lot around teaser content and I've seen success with that. So frequency, like it could be twice a week, it could be three times a week. I mean, it, it can continue to go up, but it, it really just depends on what it is that you're messaging. So is it a new launch? Is it a sale? Is it um, building hype around something or is it just knowledge? Like we'll send a couple texts a week and one could be product focused and brand focus and one can just be like educational content and or about the podcast like we are completely fine with um double texting so coming up with it sounds like coming up with like a mix of messaging also yes. makes a lot of sense yeah we always are balancing it out and we're like mm, i felt like we sent a text about you know a promotion or a product like you know the other day so let's really provide some like fun content this time so it's that balance that's really key and then otherwise just go for it um I don't want us to all drop off. We have so many more questions here we didn't get to. So I apologize if we didn't get to your question because uh, there's so many good ones. So it's it's very clear. Everyone wants to talk BFCM strategies. Um, I have to thank you all so much for coming on and taking an hour out of your day and sharing all of this knowledge with us. It, I think it has been so impactful in this short amount of time. Everyone sign up for uh, texts from Dr. Squatch, from Organic Livia, and from Yummy Extensions and uh, get some more knowledge every day from them. So thank you, Drew, Mina, and Yummy. Everyone will be getting this recap in their inboxes afterwards. It'll be on YouTube. You can watch it again. And thank you all so much for doing this. I so appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Happy thank holidays, everybody. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> Bye now.